Okay, so quickly wrapping up the last part of this tutorial, I've changed a few things since the last part, and what I've done, I've taken the main front paint color, and originally we had it white, then I changed it to blue, well now I've made up my mind again to change it back to white. So I've just cleared out any textures here in the color channel, and I just pushed all the sliders up to 255, which is going to give us a pure white. I've also taken and loaded a different image here, and I'm going to change this so we can see a little better and this is basically uh, just an image that I got off of a cell phone and I decided to use that instead of the web page grab that we had on there previously okay so now if I do another preview render okay you can see the white looks uh, pretty good so now we need to set up background to give it a little color and get rid of all of that black there. So we're just going to do something really simple. So let's go over here to a background object. Let's make a new material. And in the luminance channel, I'm going to activate that only. I'm going to go to a gradient. Go into the gradient, change the type to 2D circular. And the way this works is it applies a circular gradient flat to the background. So if we apply this now to our background object and we render, you can see that it's given us a circular gradient from black starting in the center represented by the slider and as you go further out it becomes white. So we, we want that black to be uh, maybe in this case maybe perhaps a blue color or maybe even a green let's try green maybe green will, will look good against uh, with that white front face we want to take the white and we want to change this to 100 percent black do another preview render and there you go that don't look too bad maybe a little too much green so we're gonna take this black slider and push it in just a little bit make another preview render okay that looks pretty good so what we're gonna do now is set up the render settings so I'm gonna go into it in the general tab I'm gonna choose full render output I'm gonna choose something that is HD so let's go with screen let's find something large let's go whoop I hit the wrong one let's go 1920 by 1200 that should be just fine we'll try that you can actually go up to red resolution which is the 2 3 and 4k uh, however for this that's a bit too large so we're just going to go 1920 by 1200 okay the frame range we only want one frame so we're going to say current frame in this case it's going to be frame 0 let's go to save and this is going to be a JPEG however uh, I'm I'm not going to be saving this in the save here, so I'm just going to turn off that save function there. Multipass, we don't need any of that. Anti-aliasing, this is another very important one. This will determine how long it takes and the quality for your render. So if we change the anti-aliasing to none and we render this, you can see just how fast that went. Down here in the timer, uh, it really didn't have a, a chance to get to the one second mark but you can see we get a lot of jagged lines in here and that's because there's no anti-aliasing uh, in this render so let's change it back to best and the minimum and maximum levels here you can go from 1 all the way up to 16 and the higher you go the longer it's going to take to render so please keep that in mind so usually I find either a 1 by 2 1 by 4 or a 2 by 4 will work best depending on your scene and what you've got going so in this case we're going to use a 2x4 now when I make another preview render you can see it's going a little bit slower this time but we've gotten rid of a lot of those jagged lines okay and for the options uh, to help speed up the render we're just going to take the ray depth to 8 the shadow depth to 8 and we're also going to uh, yeah I think uh, we'll leave it right there I think that'll be just fine don't need to change anything else right now okay so we're gonna create a camera so let's go up here and create a camera 
by default you have to jump into the camera so to do that we need to go to cameras scene cameras and then choose the camera we just created now we're inside of that camera so we need to change it uh, here so go into the object tab for the camera and the focal length we're going to change this to 105 as though it were looking through a 105 millimeter camera okay you can see it's appearing to be tilted so we need to go into the coordinates tab and let's reset all of the rotational values to zero then move this camera down and position it wherever you might want it perhaps you want it over to the side maybe you want to put some text in here uh, in Photoshop or something uh, but just for now we're just I'm just going to position this here in the center okay once that is finished I'm going to go up here and click the render to picture viewer that's going to pull this up I'm just going to scale this up here a bit I'm going to go to view I'm going to take it down to 25 percent so we can see this a little better there you go on my 8 core machine it only took 9 seconds to render this out at that resolution you can go to view 100 percent and there you go there's our YouTube mp3 player alright so I hope that this has helped you get a better understanding of box modeling and some texturing lighting and setting up a very basic and simple reflection rig for uh, any type of product shot. Alright, so uh, that concludes this series. Thank you for watching.